afternoon. Thank you for coming. I am Andrew Mandelson, the Associate Dean of the CUNY Graduate School of Journalism. Welcome to our school. We are very excited to host this news conference on behalf of our Center for Community and Ethnic Media for the New York Department of State. The CUNY Graduate School of Journalism is entering its 10th year as the only public graduate school of journalism in the Northeast area of the country. Our programs emphasize top-notch, affordable education that blends enduring journalistic values with current storytelling tools in order to prepare students to thrive in this ever-changing media landscape. We offer three master's degrees in journalism, including those that emphasize journalism startups and social media and audience engagement. This fall, we will be launching a new concentration in Spanish language journalism as part of our master MA in journalism. Central to our school's mission is strengthening local news outlets, especially those that serve immigrant populations. Our Center for Community and Ethnic Media supports these outlets through research and training. Most recently, the Center received a $1 million grant from the New York City Office of Media and Entertainment to support additional training opportunities. I'm so pleased to welcome Rosanna Rosado, Rosanna Rosado, the New York Secretary of State, to announce the new Naturalized New York program. Secretary Rosado was nominated by Governor Andrew M. Cuomo this past February to serve as the New York State's 66th Secretary of State and was unanimously confirmed this past June by the New York State Senate. The New York State Department of State is one of the oldest and most eclectic New York State agencies, which plays a critical role in helping to reinvigorate the state's economy and make its communities more livable. At the department, she oversees the New York State Office for New Americans for Aunt Governor Cuomo. Rosado brings a diversity of experience and leadership to the position, having previously served in both public and private sectors. Her distinguished accomplishments include being the first woman to serve as editor and publisher of the largest Spanish language newspaper in the country, El Diario La Prensa, and she was an award-winning producer. She has also championed important social issues, including prisoner reentry and women's empowerment. Please welcome Secretary Rosado. Thank you. Thank you. Buenas tardes. It's uh, exciting for me to be here. I feel like this is kind of my home, although the, or the home I would have had if this would have been open when I was back then in the days. And um, I'm also very excited that. Um, the CUNY Graduate School of Journalism is about to launch the Spanish language program uh, to train Spanish language media journalists again. If I could go back to the beginning, I would. <laughs> Thank you, Associate Dean Mendelson, for hosting us here today. Um, the Department of State and I have very deep ties to CUNY, and we appreciate the, the partnership. We do have exciting news today, and that is that I'm proud to be here on behalf of Governor Cuomo whose steadfast support and commitment to New York's immigrant community is powerful. Since the governor created the Office for New Americans in 2013, the office has proudly assisted more than 120,000 New Americans helping to remove obstacles to their economic success. So on behalf of the governor, we are proud to launch a new initiative to help immigrant New Yorkers become U.S. citizens. It's called Naturalized New York. The website is naturalizedny.org. Is it back here? Oh, it's there. <laughs> Naturalized New York is a first in the nation public-private partnership that encourages and makes it easier for those eligible New Yorkers to become U.S. citizens by providing free eligibility screenings, application assistance, fee waiver assistance, and naturaliz naturalization preparation. There are many working families just, out, just outside of the waiver el eligibility for whom the fee is still a barrier to applying. Naturalized New York will also feature a sorteo. <laughs> I'm forgetting the word in English. I'm forgetting my English. Raffle. No, it's not a raffle. It's not a lottery. A uh, drawing. Thank you. See. <laughs> In order to read my notes, I took off my glasses, so I can't, <laughs> I can't find laws. There he is. Okay. So let me start that again. Naturalized New York will also feature a drawing that will cover the cost of federal naturalization application fees for 2,000 of these low-income citizenship eligible immigrants. So we're encouraging those people who think they're eligible, who are eligible, 
to go on the website and also to come to our 27 owner centers around the state and we will help you instantly know whether A, you qualify for a fee waiver or B, you qualify for the sorteo and C, either way, we're gonna help you through the naturalization process. And here's where the spirit of partnership comes back into play. New York State, along with the Robin Hood Foundation and the New York Community Trust, will invest $1.25 million to cover the cost of those application fees. I wanna thank Eric Weingartner, Managing Director of the Robin Hood Foundation, and Viam Ball, Senior Program Officer at the, Ford, at, the, at the Foundation, for their support. I also want to thank the New York Community Trust and Patricia Jenny, VP for Grants there, who is with us today and will speak shortly, for their generosity and for their commitment to providing opportunity and making New York a great place to live for all of its citizens and aspiring citizens. I also want to thank the academic partners who have implemented and will be administering the drawing for their invaluable efforts and contributions to this important initiative. First, Justin Guest, public policy professor at George Mason University. Yes, Justin, all the way back there, okay. Um, Duncan Lawrence, executive director of the Immigration Policy Lab at Stanford University. And David Layton, political science professor and co-director at the, TOF, the Immigration Policy Lab at Stanford University and Ray Kozlowski of the University of Albany, who also sends his regrets, was not able to be here today, but we thank them for their partnership. Why is naturalized New York important? Simple, there is an economic benefit to helping immigrants become US citizens. Once naturalized, their earnings can increase, leading to higher tax payments and lower balance on public service when they succeed. We all succeed when all those people in our state come together and also when everyone has equal access to economic opportunity. We also do it because it's the right thing to do. Becoming a citizen is the culmination of a dream for many immigrants, but the cost is out of reach for many. Naturalization, naturalized New York is a beginning in helping those who want to give back to New York State achieve that dream for themselves and for their families. It's also a strong reminder of the state's commitment to immigrants and to the American dream. You will be hearing from some of the folks who are partners later. I want to thank you for doing the work that you do day in, day out. We look forward to working with you on this initiative. And it's my pleasure to bring up Patricia Jenny, VP from the New York Community Trust. Thank you very much, Secretary Rosado. So I also am very happy to be at this event representing the New York Community Trust and my colleague, Sean Moorhead, who helped put all of this together, who is our program director and responsible for our immigration grant making. As the Community Foundation for New York City, the Trust's central mission is to make this city a welcoming and accessible place for all of our residents to live, work, and play. And in a city whose economy and communities have benefited from immigration, we have a long-standing commitment to ensuring that immigrants can thrive here. We've invested millions of dollars through our human justice program and our over 30-year-old Fund for New Citizens, a collaborative fund, for organizations that help newcomers find their way. Our participation in this naturalization effort with New York State's Office for New Americans is part of, as the Secretary just mentioned, an over $1.5 million effort that we, along with Robin Hood Foundation, are supporting to research whether outreach and legal help actually make immigrants more likely to naturalize and whether citizenship improves their lives. As it turns out, there are nearly 9 million immigrants that are eligible, eligible to become US citizens, but fewer than 10% apply each year. One of the reasons is, is the cost, which Secretary alluded to. Government and foundations have spent millions of dollars to help immigrants become citizens using telephone hotlines, mass legal clinics, technology, without really knowing what works best and what the meaningful differences are that naturalization makes in immigrants' lives, in boosting their income and enhancing their integration into American life. The Immigration Policy Lab at Stanford University 
studies the effects of policies and programs on immigrants. And as we know today, it is working with the Office for New Americans, which was established by Governor Cuomo, to assist newcomers in New York. Stanford is conducting a randomized controlled trial to answer questions about the value of citizenship and the effectiveness of different types of outreach and legal services. So starting today, the Office for New Americans and the Stanford Lab will use a media campaign, including this announcement today, public, uh, public advertising, targeted advertising, to recruit immigrants who are eligible for participating in this drawing. The immigrants will register through this multilingual website that's passing along behind me, I think, um, that will provide them information, screen applicants for eligibility, and begin a brief survey to collect initial information about each applicant. The winners will receive a voucher to cover the citizenship application fee and help and legal representation from the Office for New Americans through the Opportunity Centers. They, along with those that are not selected randomly, will be surveyed about their incomes, civic participation, and integration into the community. And the researchers will be able to gauge the effectiveness of different levels of outreach and services. And they will come back again in five years to survey these people. We, basically, the study is to help foundations and government make smarter investments. <laughs> and there's a bonus. It's going to help over 1,000 New Yorkers become US citizens. So I mentioned before that the trust has a longstanding commitment to making New York City a place where newcomers can thrive. After all, more than 37% of our New York City residents were born outside of the US. Just last month, our board approved more than half a million dollars in grants to address Islamophobia through leadership development and public education about the significant contributions that our Muslim and South Asian neighbors have made to this great city. Since 1987, our collaborative Fund for New Citizens has invested in the capacity of community groups that are the front line of services for immigrants from all over the world. One of our first grants helped get started the New York Immigration Coalition, which is now a statewide coalition of more than 200 groups. We also helped Muslim and Arab men comply with special registration procedures after September 11th, and have helped hundreds of the city's immigrant youth apply for the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals when the program opened in 2012. In 2008, the Fund for New Citizens started making grants, strengthening their organizational infrastructure and, the capa and their capacity so that they could be strong advocates for their constituents, their immigrant constituents. And since then, the fund has helped more than 60 immigrant-led nonprofits improve their governance, management, and fundraising. As part of a competitive solicitation, the Fund for New Citizens awarded recently this year a $90,000 grant to the Hispanic Federation, whose president I will introduce now. The Federation is a membership coalition of more than 100 Latino nonprofits nationwide. It's headquartered here in New York, and the group advocates on behalf of Latinos in the areas of education, health, immigration, economic empowerment, civic engagement, and the environment. It makes more than 500,000 in grants every year to support and sustain Latino nonprofits. With the Fund for New Citizens grant, the Federation is coordinating outreach, education, and immigration legal services for the city's Spanish-speaking immigrants. Jose Calderon has been at the Hispanic Federation since 2001 in several capacities and now serves as its national president. Let me bring up Jose Calderon. Thank you. Um, thanks for the gracious introduction. I should say that my name is Jose Davila, actually. I'm here on behalf of our president, um, who was unable to make it. Um, people in the back are saying, wait, did Jose get a promotion to become the president? No. I'm, I'm vice president for policy and government relations at the Hispanic Federation. Um, thank you so much for the gracious introduction. Um, we are, uh, you know, as was, as was described, we are a national civil rights organization uh, headquartered here in New York. Um, and are actually one of the state's uh, Office of New American or ONA Opportunity Centers that's been helping uh, many uh, immigrants achieve the dream of becoming a citizen. 
Um, let me start by thanking the governor uh, for his leadership, uh, Secretary Rosado, um, and all the folks um, at the Office of New Americans for really making this possible, along with certainly the financial support and partnership of Robin Hood and New York Community Trust. Um, without that partnership and those resources and that commitment, that long-term commitment, uh, we would not be here today and we wouldn't be doing uh, what really is a national example uh, for the rest of the country on how states um, and foundations can really help support immigrant integration and helping folks achieve the dream of becoming a U.S. citizen. Um, I do want to say that um, this is very timely. I, I know folks in the news and everyone in the country has followed what happened in Washington a few weeks ago where the Supreme Court deadlocked on the case regarding President Obama's uh, immigration plan uh, to offer DAPA an expanded DACA, right, to over five million immigrants across the country. Um, many of us are frankly outraged that this is a deadlock and we know why this all happened. Um, and we are committed certainly to continuing to work to mobilize the Latino and immigrant vote to make sure we get the federal government we need in Washington to make sure we ultimately pass uh, comprehensive reform in Washington to fix our broken immigration system. But in the meantime, states and localities can do something now. Um, in New York alone, there are over a million immigrants who are eligible to apply for citizenship and uh, face a, a myriad of barriers to be able to do so. Um, it's not that they don't want to, it's not that they don't care about that. There are clearly benefits to becoming a citizen that most immigrants and all immigrants really embrace. But a big challenge certainly is the, you know, the enormous $700 plus fee to be able to apply for citizenship. And so initiatives like Naturalize NY are instrumental in making sure that more uh, New Yorkers, folks who live here, who've been here for decades, frankly, uh, but haven't been able to choose between maybe paying rent or mortgage or paying college tuition for their kids and choosing to apply for citizenship for themselves, their spouses, maybe their children, whoever, um, that's a big expense. 700 times one, times two, times four or five family members can be a big expense. And this program, while it won't resolve uh, the whole state's problem, is a important first step. And we know that groups will continue to also offer resources to help as many immigrants as possible apply for this lottery, hopefully win the drawing, uh, but find other ways to work on a federal level to lower that citizenship fee and work on ways in New York to find even more resources to build on this great national model. Uh, New York is showing um, how, uh, in spite of all the rhetoric around um, uh, immigrants across the country, uh, we can be a state um, that can support this community and help them achieve their dreams. And this is not just about you know, becoming a citizen for you know, um, sort of academic sake, right? This is really tangible goals, right? This is about um, being, having access to um, better education, having access to better paying jobs, potentially, um, being able to vote, which is a, a big dream for many folks. In fact, we are one of the groups that's privileged to be able to actually register voters um, in the uh, Brooklyn courthouse, the federal courthouse, where folks, after taking their oath uh, uh, to become a citizen, can walk over to the table and actually fill out a voter registration form. And overwhelmingly, immigrants, once they become citizens, want to register, want to vote, and that's certainly Hispanic Federation's mission, and I'm sure many of the groups in the room that offer these services and register voters uh, can, can, uh, can attest to that. So uh, again, we want to thank the state for their leadership on this. Uh, as an ONA Opportunity Center, we're going to continue to work with the state and partners to make sure as many eligible immigrants actually achieve that dream. Um, and, and again, we, th we thank the foundations as well for providing the resources for that. Um, I next want to introduce um, one of our sister organizations, uh, the Asian American Federation uh, the Executive Director, Joanne Yu, who's been a partner on the front lines with us in Washington, uh, here in New York. Um, we're doing a lot of great work with them, and I know Joanne can add a lot of perspective to uh, what's really an important initiative. So Joanne, please. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? Um, I promise my notes are really short. I, it's my first time doing a, doing a press event with the new secretary, so I thought I'd better be prepared. So, um, uh, Jose, thank you so much. Uh, we end up in the same events, and we end up, you know, one of us will go first, one of us will go second. Depending on which meeting you're at, it's the Federation. So, um, I too would like to thank the governor. This is an amazing program. Um, you know, uh, thank you for, to this, uh, our secretary uh, for inviting us. I'd like to thank the ONA staff, to the deputy secretary, um, Jorge Montalvo, who always picks up my calls and answers my gazillion questions. Um, I think we're, um, this is the Asian American Federation's first year um, doing this program. And our program is done with, um, uh, with COPO, it's a um, Council of People's Organization, and with Chinese uh, Progressive Association, and we do our program in Midwood, Brooklyn. And we originally, we thought that we would serve people, um, it's the South Asian community, the Pakistani um, South Asian community, but we're getting folks from 
the entire neighborhood, Haitians, Mexicans, um, Uzbeki. I think um, we had to hire an Uzbeki speaking sp staff member. So, you know, it really is this amazing neighborhood anchor that really provides information and an opportunity to be a gate, a, to, and become a gateway for um, newcomers who want to explore citizenship. So, what this program means, I was, you know, like Jose, I was doing the math and I said, oh my gosh, you know, when my parents applied for citizenship, it was really cheap because that was back in the mid 70s. But I thought if I apply, it's almost $700 a person. So if you're a couple, that's $1,400. And that's a lot of, even for middle class families, that's a big obligation, let alone working, if you're a working family, that's a, that's a big chunk of change. And so it might take you a really long time to hit that number. So what this means is it's gonna get um, working families in the, in the immigration pipeline much faster. Um, for us, I think, you know, why we're so committed to doing this program and the reason why we signed up to, uh, for, to be an oa &E Opportunity Center, we've heard so much anti-immigrant rhetoric this campaign season, and the reality is, you know, we've, it's, we keep hearing how immigrants keep taking resources away and we are a burden, but the reality is that we aren't a burden. We make we bring all our talents, our culture, and the reality is that we make our, this country stronger it, by contributing to every aspect of our civil, civic and socioeconomic life. And I think immigrants make great, our great country even greater. So um, we're really excited. We, we thank the trust. Uh, if, you, if you've been doing this work for, for a while and if you haven't been funded by the trust, you know, that speaks to your level of work, so thank you, uh, Trust. Um, Robin Hood uh, Foundation as well, I know that you're making, they're also making some big um, contributions. They were the very first foundations to step up during Sandy and made some really big investment uh, with the Asian American community. So with that, I'd like to, so thank you very much. Thank you for um, this great program. It's great news and it's, I'm so excited to be here to share, um, uh, to be able to participate. Uh, so now I'd like to introduce uh, I'll give the podium back to Dean Mendelson. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you again for everyone coming out, and thank you to Secretary Rosado and the other speakers for their time. Um, the speakers will be available in the lobby to answer specific questions about the program. Uh, and thank you again for coming out. Come again to another event at the CUNY Graduate School of Journalism. Thank you. Excuse me. As Associate uh, Dean Mendelson mentioned, uh, we will have our speakers available via gaggle one-on-ones, however you'd like. Additionally, we have the academic partners who devise the drawing here in the room. Um, if anyone wants to speak to them, please uh, let me or Mercedes know, and we will bring them to you. And we have a host of community partners here who I'm sure would be willing to share any uh, information with you. So thanks again for coming and uh, we do appreciate it.